The dollar is a medium of exchange. I would argue it's not a store of value. Uh, a medium of exchange that has a, a legal monopoly on settlements transactions in the United States of America. It is backed by the full faith and credit of the government of the United States. And by extension, your full faith and credit and the government's call on the value of your assets and the value of your earnings. In other words, the dollar is backed by you. You need to decide what kind of collateral that is and what circumstance uh, would be occasioned uh, by a call on the value of the dollar. Maybe Doug's definition is pretty good. After my long-winded definition, a floating abstraction actually sounds pretty good. Doug Casey also says the dollar is the worst currency in the world with the sole exception of all the others. Uh, we have the deepest and most liquid securities market in the world, the U.S. Treasury market. And for all its faith, the dollar relative to any other fiat currency is pretty good. That means despite the fact that I know as a saver at current interest rates that I am losing purchasing power on an annual basis, I maintain a fair bit of U.S. dollar liquidity. I consider what is in effect a negative interest rate, which is to say, the destruction of some of my purchase price, purchasing power as an option payment, because I've learned in my life that having liquidity during momentary panics, during times when there isn't liquidity, gives me the tools and hopefully the courage to take advantage of illiquid situations rather than being taken advantage of uh, or, or by them. Now, Rick Rule breaks it down for us. While the US dollar is losing purchasing power with current interest rates, making it a poor long-term investment, it's crucial to maintain dollar liquidity. Why? Despite its drawbacks, the US dollar is backed by the full faith and credit of the US government, making it the most reliable currency during market panics. Rule emphasizes that having liquidity in such moments allows savvy investors to capitalize on opportunities rather than being victimized by the chaos. He points out that even though holding dollars means accepting a negative interest rate, the ability to act decisively when the market tumbles far outweighs the gradual erosion of value. So while the dollar isn't great for saving, it's invaluable for seizing opportunities in turbulent times. I do not make long-term investments in the US dollar. I'm not a holder of treasuries with a date longer than two years. I invest in things where time is on my side and dollar is not the dollar is not one of those. But I certainly am a holder of US dollar liquidity because I suspect that the things I'd like to buy in a panic will be de denominated in dollars. I am also a holder of liquidity in gold. But if you are going to be a holder of liquidity in gold, you have to be psychologically willing to sell it. I remember very well in a couple prior panics, uh, clients of mine who had large gold holdings were unwilling to sell it, to use the stored wealth in gold to diversify into asset classes that stood a better chance of performing in the panic. So for those people, their gold wasn't liquidity, particularly in uh, 2008 when as a consequence of illiquidity, the gold quote fell too. <laughs> so it's important that if you hold gold for liquidity, which I do, that you maintain the psychological predisposition to be able to sell it, to use some of it to acquire uh, other asset classes that you think will perform better for you. Um, I suspect because people don't trust each other uh, you need a medium of exchange that's globally accepted. The dollar is that. Uh, I have, uh, from a prior life, a lot of experience with sovereign wealth funds. Uh, and I remember conversations with a couple of Asian sovereign wealth funds uh, asking them whether they actually trusted the U.S. government. And they said, of course not, but we trust them more than we trust each other. <laughs> Uh, some would argue that Bitcoin, as an example, could function as a global medium of exchange. My suspicion is that the float, <laughs> pick a price, is too small. 
uh, and that adoption, global adoption, uh, is too far away. Others suggest that the BRICS could come the, become the global reserve, reserve currency. The, the trouble is that none of the underlying currencies that would form the BRICS are convertible. <laughs> so uh, that's a bit of a problem. And, and as as little as those countries trust each trust us, they trust each other less. Can you imagine uh, what the Chinese would feel like if they developed a treasury chest of a, a, a couple billion or trillion euros? Or not euros, I'm sorry, uh, rubles. And they went to Russia to uh, cash in. Uh, that doesn't work. I'm 71 years of age, and I suspect that for the balance of my lifetime, and I, ex I intend to live a long time, that the dollar will still be the world's reserve currency, albeit not as dominant as it has been and not as dominant as it is today. I absolutely do think that the Ambler Road will be permitted, but I think it'll take five years or so. Uh, Trilogy needs to do a better job with the native corporations in Alaska. Rural politics in Alaska is controlled by indigenous people. And Trilogy has spent way too much time in Washington who hate them and not enough time with the indigenous people of Alaska who have uh, the political will uh, and some would say the political franchise to move the deb debate along. Can you imagine the woke Democrats acting against the consolidated interests uh, of the tribal corporations in Alaska? Can you imagine the impact that a tribal delegation in regalia and Tom Toms might have uh, in Washington and the ability of the woke elites to stand up against them? Can you imagine the impact in the Alaska state legislature, although that Alaska state legislature is in favor of the road, uh, to stand up to the political forces that run rural Alaska? Trilogy needs to go back to the drawing board and they need to get the indigenous people, particularly the tribal corporations in Alaska, more solidly on their side and a wonderful exploration job. I'm having a difficult time tying uh, what's clearly a lenticular deposit uh, into one overall deposit. It looks to me like a string of pods. And I'm having a difficult time understanding the economics of that string of pods. As a consequence of that, I don't own it. I will note that a good friend of mine and former business partner of mine, Eric Sprott, uh, who is a legitimate billionaire, feels differently. So you need to listen to both sides of the discussion. Well, the thing that I guess worries me the most about Hercules is that they're doing sole risk exploration for a porphyry. Uh, their discovery hole was truly a gaudy hole. Uh, but porphyry exploration is not for the faint of heart, nor is it for the poor. One thing that could go wrong is it might not be there. <laughs> uh, it could be a solid whiff. The second thing that could go wrong is that it might take them 100 holes or 120 holes to find it, and they'll have to continue to dilute. The third uh, third circumstance is that their geological thesis might be right, and they might tack it. Uh, I have to say, when I looked at the core, when I looked at the Bornite in that discovery hole, uh, I got awfully excited. <laughs> I don't think there's anything wrong with publicly listing <clears throat> businesses like Amark. I'm not an AMARC shareholder because they have on occasion employed too much debt on their balance sheet. And I wondered when I looked at their income statement and balance sheet if I was smart enough to run a business like that. I decided that I wasn't. Hopefully they are. Um, being public gives a company like AMARC certain advantages. If they, go to, if they need to go to raise equity, you don't have too much of a discussion over price. The market sets the price, you know, plus or minus 10 or 15 percent. Um, so I, I don't have any difficulty with that. And, and if you believe that there is going to be greatly increased demand for small denomination precious metals in collector's hands, uh, AMARC may be the only legitimate way other than buying physical gold and silver itself uh, that an investor can participate in the game. I, I know the people. They're very, very, very high quality business people. As I say, I didn't invest because of their propensity, given the capital intensive nature of their business, to use debt. But it sure worked for them. I mean, they anticipated that 2022 turnaround 
wonderfully well.